The appearance of the latest alcoholic offering to enter the den has certainly got the dragons guessing. Is this whiskey in a receptacle that looks like baby food? <laughs> but will best friends Thomas Ask and Tristan Stevenson be toasting to investment success or drowning their sorrows? Good luck. Good luck, mate. Hello, um, my name's Tom, this is Tristan, and we're here to pitch for £75,000 in return for 10% of our company, Whiskey Me. Whiskey Me is a subscription-based membership that sends 50ml samples of premium single malt whiskey to our members on a monthly schedule. From as little as £7 a month, our members receive a double measure of premium single malt whiskey that might otherwise set them back £14 if they were to buy it in a bar, or require a commitment of 50 to 100 pounds if they were going to buy an entire bottle. The company was founded in 2017, um, and since then we've grown from zero to 2,300 subscribers. In your boxes, uh, you have a selection of three different single malt whiskies in pouches, and we'd also like to invite you to ask any questions that you have. A whiskey subscription club that delivers a diversity of single malts straight through your letterbox is the proposition Thomas Ask and Tristan Stevenson are hoping will be a neat idea for the Dragons. You just want to warm us up before we That's ask right. any questions. Very That's good it. ploy. <laughs> I like your plan. They're looking for £75,000 in exchange for a 10% stake in their business. You're in heaven, aren't you? Absolutely. Tej Lalvani is eager to engage with the whiskey wannabes. Tristan, Tom, well, look, whiskey is my drink of choice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to understand a bit more about your background. Actually. Yeah, so we've both spent around 20 years in hospitality um, from bartending, and we set up a, what was a consultancy company 10 years ago. And in the process of that, in 2016, we opened a whiskey bar, uh, which is in Moorgate in London, um, and that's where it started. Well, so look, in terms of customers, what is involved in the subscription? So if, if, you were, um, if you were a sort of member that had just signed up on a monthly, every month you'd receive a pouch in a biodegradable envelope coming just like that through the letterbox. That is it. Drops onto the mat. There you go. So I think the fact that you've done a pouch is really interesting because it's just so different to what people expect and think of it, mm. and it's just so practical. What I would say, though, is I think it looks a bit like a children's puree baby type thing. I take your point. I mean, it, 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 it's bright, it's colourful. It could be and has been confused with, uh, you know, other types of food packaging. But of course, it was designed to actually fulfil a purpose. We are far better value than our competitors because of that pouch, because it doesn't break, because it fits through letterboxes, so people don't have to go to the post office to go and pick up the whiskey delivery that never arrived. Uh, and we're very much committed to the liquid. And so whenever someone questions the container, that's just an opportunity for us to say, look, these are great liquids. You should be thinking about the liquid, not a glass vial, you know? Tristan calmly defends the product's packaging under criticism from Tej Lalvani. Deborah Meaden now wants to spill all on how she became a whiskey connoisseur. I hated whiskey with a vengeance. I have romantic is this. I learned to drink whiskey in Africa with a guy who was absolutely, we were sitting on, overlooking the plains of Africa and he was insisting on me learning how to drink whiskey. I didn't know you had to learn to drink whiskey. I just thought you could drink it. What's the way of drinking whiskey then? I'd like to know that. Well, I didn't like it because I used to taste it and I would get it at the back of my throat and I'd be, oh. And I was told, breathe in, sip and breathe out yeah. over your whiskey. Don't breathe in. And it's the breathing in that was giving me the yeah. <gasps> yeah, yeah. feeling about yeah. it. And he's absolutely right. So, um, well, so glad... there you go. Yeah, give, give it a go. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Which one's the best one to try? i uh, try the Altmore 12. It's probably the lightest of the three, if you want to go in. Anyway, that's, my, that yeah, was, no, that's, that's my whiskey story. So, that's good. A very dear friend of mine who was sitting in that chair in Dragon's Den for many years invested in a gin club subscription model that has been unbelievably successful but partly because 
the gin companies were seeing them as a marketing tool. Mm. So a lot of the product was free. Now, that obviously relies on you getting enough yeah. Yeah. eyeballs to make it actually worthwhile. But is that where you're thinking this is going to 100%, go? 100%. Um, we realised that that is exactly the way to pitch it to brands, is actually this is a sampling opportunity to get your liquid onto the lips of X many thousand people that want to know more about the category, that absolutely love whiskey. So what, what are you missing? I mean, to be honest, you've got a lot of experience. You've launched this, you've done really well from the word go. So which bits do you feel you're missing? We're, we're not missing anything in respect of knowing the whiskey industry. What we're missing is the, the, the help to, to expand it, to grow it. We don't have any experience taking a brand from this sort of size and turning it into a multi-million pound brand. And it feels like if we don't do it right now, then we'll miss the opportunity. So it's, it's, it's key from our point of view to get the right expertise on board. The entrepreneurs have dreams of whiskey world domination. But Tuka Suleiman wants to see if the numbers they've generated so far tot up with these grand plans. Great idea. So what's the turnover? This, this year it will be 223,000. Gross profit? 85,000. Yeah. Net is about 52,000. What's your prediction for next year and the year after? So our plan is 450,000 after yep. the, at the end of year one. Gross profit? I think it's around 150,000. Yes. Net profit? 90,000. So turnover for the following year is... Um, 1.7 Yeah, 1.7 million. million. Yep. And then gross profit? I believe it was around the 420,000 with around 350,000 net. So you're telling me that a 1.7 million turnover business would only need 90,000 to run? Yeah, well... The question is, what do we need to spend money on to run it? I don't there's, know. There's, there's, you tell me, it's your business. Well, this, this is it. There's, there's, there's us. Your salaries. I mean, just... yeah, but, yeah, this is true. I mean, our goal with this is to grow it to such a stage where we can sell it. And we would prefer to not take salaries and to funnel money back into marketing. But even if you, even if you push the salaries to one side, you're going to go virtually, yeah. you know, six, seven times bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And you're telling me you have no overhead. Yeah, sure. The reality of these figures is that as the business expands, you will have to have audit fees, you'll have to have insurance, you'd have to have all sorts of overheads, which you may not account for today. So for the next year or two, your profitability is unpredictable. So on that basis, I wish you all the best and I'm out. Tuka Suleiman delivers a sobering analysis of the entrepreneur's financial forecasts and heads for the door. And it appears Sarah Davies has also made up her mind. I'll tell you where I'm at. I think you've got a, a pretty robust business. I think it's different. I think you've spotted a gap in the market and you've got a really great opportunity. Thank you. Honestly, though, I think you need an investor who has a remote jot of interest in what you're selling. <laughs> and that's not me. Okay. <laughs> I've tried yeah. to take the advice of my fellow dragon here and give it a really good go, and it still wasn't for me. So, not one for me today. I'm out. A whiskey subscription service isn't to Sarah Davies' taste, and she becomes the second dragon to bow out. Peter Jones has been quietly drinking in the pitch so far, but has the pair's offering hit the spot? I've got one of my guys that, that has come into mind that I work with, and he always said to me, if there's any business that comes into the den, there's a pitch about whiskey, I please, I beg you to invest in it. <laughs> because I believe that it's going to be the next craze. So I'm going to make you an offer. And I'm going to offer you all of the money. But I'd like 20% of the business. Thanks. OK, thank you. <laughs> Peter Jones takes a shot at investment with an offer, albeit for twice the equity the duo wanted to part with. 
Does whiskey lover Deborah Meaden also want to contribute to the company's kitty with some cash? I think you guys, you've got a really good instinct about this. I mean, you've lived in this world. Um, and I think I can certainly help in terms of growing your market. So I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 20% of the business. OK, thank you. Thank you. I think there's a lot of potential. You can really grow this internationally. And, you know, I'm passionate about whiskey. Um, it's not that I have somebody else who, who's passionate about it and who works for me, but I think it's yeah. That's a cheap, something I want. That's well, a cheap it's, it's shot. True, though. It's, it's a true. cheap shot. Um, so I would like to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 15%. OK. Tej Lalvani makes his play and undercuts Peter Jones and Deborah Meaden by 5%. But that's still more than the 10% stake the entrepreneurs wanted to give away. Now, now that all those offers are on the table, would any of you like to budge or change your offer at all? Yeah, actually, do you know what? I'm going to throw something in. What about 75,000 for 15% on the basis of the fact that sometimes two dragons are better than one? And I'll share it if Deborah would share it. Um, yeah. So you're offering, uh, you're asking for seven and a half percent each? Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Should, Should probably have a chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> now there are two offers on the table both asking for a 15% share in return for the £75,000. However, Deborah Meaden and Peter Jones are happy to team up on a deal, whereas Tej Lalvani is flying solo. It's two better than one. That's tricky. But with the whiskey entrepreneurs only looking to hand over a 10% stake, they have plenty to ponder. Or should we say three dragons, 5% each? I think they might go with it. I could do that. We could ask. Yeah. Yeah. OK. We've got a question. Um, would you three consider each going in equally at 5% and all of you partnering on? What, so you end up with Deborah and you've got, you know, the best male dragon in the den <laughs> and you've got somebody that loves the product. What's not to like? I would personally love that depending on the other dragons. I think there's good value add from, from all the three dragons, so I'm OK with that. Me too. OK, then we have, a, we have a deal. We'll accept that. Yes. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. <laughs> well done. Great. That's wonderful. High five. Thank you very much. <laughs> well thank negotiated. You, thank you. Thanks for your Great. time. Thank you. It's bottoms up for Tristan and Tom as they leave the den with £75,000 and a triple measure of dragons to help make their business a worldwide success. <laughs> that was amazing. That was really good. Over the moon, like, absolutely thrilled. We hoped we would get investment, but to get three dragons in one go is an incredible result. You are not to drink the profits, Tej. If this is what I have to do to get you guys to drink whiskey, to invest <laughs> in a business, then so be it. First to face the dragons is Manchester-based Tom Hurst with a taste of the tropics, which he believes could have them over a barrel. That's a sight for sore eyes, eh? Pineapple, rum, let's head to the bar. When times get tough, this entrepreneur has an unusual piece of family history to draw on. One of the things that I'm always inspired by is the legacy of my great-great-uncle, who was the first man to swim the channel in 1875. His epitaph was, nothing great is easy. So whenever there's difficult moments in the business, I always refer back to that. So will Tom need to summon the spirit of his illustrious forebear in the den? Hello, dragons. Um, my name is Tom Hurst, and I am the founder of Rockstar Spirits. 
Um, I'm here today to ask for £25,000 in return for a 2% equity stake in my business. I launched Rockstar Spirits back in November 2018. Um, since launch, we've released seven products. The first of those is Pineapple Grenade. This is a 65% overproof rum with flavours of pineapple and salted caramel. Then came a grapefruit grenade, a passion fruit grenade, um, a two swallows cherry and a two swallows orange and ginger. We are currently listed with Sainsbury's, with Majestic Wine, and we've got all the major online guys. Sales are pretty good, about 14,500 cases to date, which is about 87,000 bottles. Um, so we're doing pretty well, but we could do even better with a dragon on board. And um, I'm going to ask for questions in a moment, but first of all, uh, we'd like to get you to try some rums, hopefully get you a little bit tipsy. A range of premium spiced rums is the offering from Tom Hurst. <laughs> 65% Tuka. Who is seeking £25,000 <laughs> in return for a 2% share in his company. We've got a um, world class rum and coke, and we have a cocktail that's been created specifically for you guys the Dragon's Daiquiri. The drinks entrepreneur has already succeeded in mixing things up. <laughs> One up. Cheers. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the rum, guys. But will Tej Lalvani be stirred and not shaken by his business? Tom, hi. Hi. So, the rum market's had a lot of growth recently. What's really different about yours? Well, with mine, it's basically following that premiumization trend that we've seen in craft beer and gin of better quality ingredients. So we use incredibly high quality spirit. We source it from the Diamond Distillery in Guyana. Well, look, I'm not much of a cocktail drinker, but this is pretty good. OK. So well Thank done. You. Right, Tom, that's very nice. Um, let's get to nitty gritty. OK. Have you got a business? Got a business. Let's go through the numbers. So, uh, year one, six month period, 66,000 turnover and a break even on net. Uh, year two, which is the first full year of trading, 360,000 turnover, 125,000 net. Year three um, will be 720,000 um, turnover and um, 250,000 net. Moving into year four, um, that will be um, 1.4. I'm going to stop you because okay. when I see doubling up of numbers, Basically. right, um, I can carry that going on myself. Sure. Um, and you're just going to double up every year. Any plans how you're going to do that? We've we got double the amount of SKUs this year than we had last year, and we've also added Sainsbury's, uh, and we've done 4,500 cases with Sainsbury's uh, officially since February. Sure. Excellent. OK, good, thank you. With shelf space in the supermarkets already secured and healthy predictions for future growth, Tom's pitch is off to a smooth start. But will his packaging pass muster with a design-aware Deborah Meaden? I think your branding's lovely. These illustrations and labels, they look Thank very you. high quality. You know, so I'm expecting the drink in it to be lovely. Yeah, that's the goal, to make it pretty enough to jump off the shelf and then taste good enough to repeat purchase and then sort of buy the rest of the range, basically. Tom, can I just say, you, you, you clearly know what you're doing, <laughs> which is quite refreshing <laughs> and quite a joy to listen to, but what's your background? So, my background is 22 years in sales and 20 of those in the drinks industry. So I've kind of done this before for other people, but, you know, taking those skills and doing it for myself. And what about in terms of your exit strategy? Because obviously yes. the, the, the magic is to catch it at the moment yes. where everybody else sees growth and you feel Indeed. like, mm, we're so on the cusp. That was kind of where I was going with my doubling up every year um, sales figures. So kind of year six, we would have got to 2.5 million net profit. And my goal has always been to hit that and then sort of look at a 12 and a half million, so five times um, net profit as, a, as the exit plan. Tom's strategic vision has further whetted the dragon's appetites for a deal. But with the future of his company seemingly mapped out, Sarah Davies wants to find out what has brought the entrepreneur to the den. 
what exactly are you looking for today? And you're going to have to tell me before I drink any more <laughs> of this, because it is uh, knocking my socks off. But <laughs> it's clear that you haven't come in for money, really. Money's nice, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Um, but we've kind of got proof of concept. We've got products that sell, but it's kind of how do we then really jump it forward? And that's that's why I'm here today. It's all about that kind of endorsement that you bring to the brand, and then I'll give you a nice chunk of cash when we when we sell to um, uh, a, a big company. I think it's a, a great product. Yes. Um, and I think you've been really sensible in what you've come in here asking for a low amount of Thank money. You. But being totally honest. Yeah. My personal ambition is not really to take on investments where I'm more of a passive investor. And it's not an industry that I am an expert or prominent in, so I'm not sure how much I could add. So it's not a one for me today. I won't be investing, and I'm out. An unexpected setback for the spirits entrepreneur as a first dragon raises a glass but turns down a deal. Has Tej Lalvani detected an opportunity to make money from molasses? I think the market is a little bit competitive, but I think you've created a good product. And I think above all, you seem to be a great entrepreneur. Thank you. So I'm gonna make you an offer. Wow, okay, amazing. I'm gonna offer you all of the money 25,000 pounds for 8%. An offer for Tom, courtesy of Tej Lalvani. His product has already made a powerful impression on Tuka Suleiman, but does a 65% overproof rum mean a 100% guaranteed deal? Tom, well, first of all, I, I tried that, and it, it's seductive. I think you're very credible. I asked myself, mm, does he really need a dragon? You definitely need a dragon. Yeah. And, and then I say, well, you know, a dragon has the best black book. Indeed. Pick up the phone and don't put any door. You know? yeah. I'm not even going to faff around, you know. I'm going to make you an offer. I'll give you all the money, and I'll match Teji's offer of 8%. Thank you, Tika. So, Tom, you've got the experience, you know what you're talking about, you've got a great brand here. So, it would be kind of hard not to make you an offer. <laughs> so, so, I'm going to. Something in the rum, obviously. Um, and I'm going to offer you all of the money. And I'm going to make it competitive by saying I want 6% of the business. OK, thank you. just leaves me. I've been sitting there thinking, do I really want to make quarter of a million quid in five years' time? Yeah. Which is what you've offered me, basically. That's basically it, yeah. Um, I've been more interested in making a lot more money. So, I'm thinking I need a relevant stake and I would give you the backing, support, and my contacts, both in the groceries, plus the drinks wholesaler market, which okay. I have. So I'm going to make you an offer. OK. But I would like to give you an offer of £50,000 for 10%. But actually, that's going to cost you nothing. Yeah. Because you're not going to make 12 and a half million quid. You're going to make a hell of a lot more. It's doubles all round as Theo Pafitis offers twice the amount of money the entrepreneur is asking for, albeit in return for five times more equity than was originally up for grabs. Three other dragons have offered the £25,000 that Tom was originally seeking with Tej Lalvani and Tuka Suleiman both looking for 8% of his business, whilst Deborah Meaden is demanding 6%. I guess it's down to me now, isn't it? You can have a chat with the wall, 
I'm OK for the wall. Oh, um, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> prefer to lock people in the eye, especially when it's money. Thank you, first of all, for the offers. Really, really appreciate it. All, all fantastic. And I'd love to work with, with all of you guys. Um, is there any wiggle room in terms of um, equity? If we paid back the, um, the 25,000 in year one. So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll, I'll drop down to 5%. Um, if you get my... Yeah, money back in year one. Yeah. I'd match that. OK. As I sit here sometimes and say to people, it's not worth walking away for 1%. I no, would, I would I agree. agree with that too. I would say that I would go down to 5%. Uh, Theo, I guess your offer is your offer. Cos it's... My offer is to make you a lot more I, money. That makes sense. Uh, right. Tej and Tuka, would you guys do a two-dragon thing or is that just waters it down too much? I, I would do a two-dragon if we were in for, say, 8%, yeah. 4% each. Then you get two lots of black books, two lots of influences, two lots of everything. We've got several deals together, we work well. So I'm happy to share it with Tuka. OK, I think I've made my decision, let's do it. Great! Wait! <laughs> oh, <laughs> excellent. I think it's great, I think it's high five. amazing, yeah. Virtual high five. All the best. I'm ready for a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's bottoms up for Tom, who heads down to the bottom floor with the £25,000 he was originally seeking and the backing of a duo of dragons with the commercial acumen to help his rum business tot up record profits. I'm excited for the future of the business. Two dragons on board, both with expertise in online and in the big high street arena. So, um, yeah, couldn't be happier. He's exceptional, really and, and that, that's not the rum talking. I don't say you can go wrong, because I reckon you could drink 25 grand's worth before you lost your money. As my great uncle would say, nothing great is easy. Uh, and it hasn't been easy, but it has been great. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The next entrepreneur vying to win an investment in the den is Los Angeles-born Pierre Varma, who's cooked up a master plan by calling on a master chef finalist to help pitch her culinary concept to the dragons. Entering the den, the dragon's den. Yeah. Since lockdown, people are scratch cooking like crazy, and the sort of appetite for new ingredients has gone up tremendously. Sauces. Sweet sauces, though, because there's a cake. Well, I'm hungry, so... It smells good. I feel like you're so socially distant these days, Jan. <laughs> are you mad at me? No. no. <laughs> It's fair to say Pia's path to producing her product has had its fair share of obstacles. My biggest fear as a novice entrepreneur, you know, I've made some mistakes. Hopefully they'll forgive them. Hi, Dragons. My name is Pia, and I'm the founder of Just a Splash. I'm looking for £75,000 for 15% of my business. Just a Splash is a range of culinary alcohol available in five flavors, port, marsala, sherry, rum, and brandy, all available in these handy 100 ml spout pouches. I had the idea for Just a Splash because I wanted to make a cranberry sauce one Christmas and ended up spending 15 pounds for a bottle of port when I just needed a splash. So instantly I saw a gap in the market and we launched officially in 2018 in Ocado. We're in over 100 independent stores, farm shops, delis, garden centers, and we also have done a trial in Sainsbury's. To show you how much flavor the product can add to a dish, I've got my friend Jan Florio here, who's a master chef finalist. He's cooked up some retro chicken marsala and some pasta marsala. So if you'd like to come up to try some of the food. How are we doing, chef? I'm ready. Am I going to need a bib? <laughs> Pia Varma's product is a range of alcohol pouches for cooking. Thank you. Finalist MasterChef, I'm expecting a lot. No pressure, Jan. <laughs> no pressure. 
She's looking for £75,000 in return for 15% of her business. Thanks, guys. While the rest of the dragons chow down on their master chef marsalas, Tej Lalvani wants to find out if Pierre's idea has all the ingredients for a tasty investment. Pierre, it's an interesting product, actually. And it's great to see entrepreneurs coming in, thinking about ideas where you can have a niche. And this seems to be a niche. And no one else is doing it. You're the first, is that right? Uh, yes. Well, there's some miniature bottles of wine on the market, which is why we're doing um, wine concentrate sachets instead of bottles of wine. So <clears throat> one of the hard sells on this is trying to educate customers to say it's a, an alcohol for food. How do you plan to do that? Because I see that as a challenge. The biggest problem we have is where do you put the product? It's a brand new category. So where do we place it within store? Do we place it in alcohol? Do we place it in ingredients? Um, I've come to kind of the realization that I, th I think it should be in, in, in the ingredient section because I think people do linger there and they look for new interesting ingredients. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the alcohol section, consumers are much more likely to just go get their product and leave. Um, what's the cost per 100 ml on this compared to a bottle of alcohol? So um, the cost per 100 ml, so this is uh, our recommended retail price. We really wanted to be at a 199 retail price point, which is where we started Do you out. Know the answer to this is going to be a number, not an explanation of what you wanted it to be. Right. So the price per 100 ml of yeah. this versus the same alcohol in a bottle. So this is 2.99 is the retail price point. Mm -hmm. And a bottle of port uh, would typically be about 14 or 15 pounds for 750 CL. Uh, it's 22 pound 50 for this and 15 quid for a bottle of port. Yes. Thank you for answering that, Theo. My mental math is not the best. It's great to have a dragon answer for you. But what I'm more interested in is your understanding. Yeah, of, of the of, like for like. Of like for like. Yeah. Because I think there's going to be a resistance to this because it's actually a very expensive way of buying your alcohol to add to your cooking. Right. The like for like cost of Pierre's pouches, compared with bottles of booze, isn't to Deborah Meaden's taste. Theo Pafitis now wants to know about the sale so far of the entrepreneur's alcoholic accoutrements. Pierre, so you launched in 2018 with a Cardo. Yes. And what happened? We did uh, roughly around 33,000 in sales in a Cardo. That's with very little exposure, not many people knowing that we exist. OK. And then you said you did a trial with Sainsbury's. Yes. It was in, I believe, uh, 300 stores. So uh, we sold them about 15,000 pounds worth of stock. When was that? Uh, that was the end of 2018, so leading up to Christmas. And I believe it took about maybe a month and a half to two months to sell through. Right. So it did reach the volumes that they would have liked, right. one per store per day or week? Or... No. We had it on clip strips, mixed skew. So when our best seller sold out, we couldn't replenish it in time. So that may have been the problem. So there was just a one-off trial and there was no repeat. Absolutely. Right, so you launched in 18. Yeah. What was your turnover and figures during that year? To date, from 2018 to, to the, uh, February 2020, uh, 74,000. OK, and gross margin? We, um, we've lost 90, 93,000 pounds. Yeah, if the public are not buying it, right. it's wasted shelf space. Right. And that's how retailers will look at it. If your product is not selling at the rate it should be selling, you will be delisted. The numbers on the sales speak for themselves. Something is not right. Poor sales so far for Pia's product is a problem for Tuka Suleiman. It's a blow for the entrepreneur. But can Theo Pafitis get her pitch back on track? So, how have you funded the business? Uh, mostly um, my family, uh, and also we have some investors. How much money's gone in? Uh, so, um, from my family, we've put in 264,000. Right. And then um, we've got 75,000 from investors. Okay. Any loans, bank loans? We've got 20. 
thousand pounds in an overdraft. Okay. Just uh, on the theory. Just one second. Just, oh, no, no. I mean, just on your no, on the two sixty four. You can ask your question in a no, second. No, I'm just on my final bit. I just so want to know, is that two sixty four equity? I equity was equity. gonna ask that question. I'm trying to clarify and understand. For goodness sake. Right. The question that was coming next yes. that my friend obviously was impatient about was how's that money gone in? The amount for my family is on the books as a loan. However, we could just treat it as part of our equity. Here, I am staggered that you have already spent £339,000 and I bet you you'll burn through that and you still won't be turning over a lot of money and you'll still think to yourself there's another reason. What you're doing so far is convincing yourself of a reason why it hasn't worked because your answer to every question is an excuse. Now, excuses can also be reasons. That didn't work because we got that bit wrong and this is why. Yeah. But in this instance, I don't think you're really recognising what's going on here. Right. What's your single biggest retailer at the moment? Ocado. So you've sold in total 74,000, half of that through Ocado, yep. over a two-year period? Yes. You don't have anybody competing against you? No. I'm going to say that again. Over two years, you've sold £74,000. Yes. You've got nobody competing against you? No. That's all I'm going to say. Deborah Meaden's sobering analysis of Pia's pouches has deglazed the dragon's view of her product. Is Tejlal Alvani willing to infuse this alcohol business idea with an investment? Look, to build a consumer brand at retail is, is expensive, especially when you've got a product that you've got to communicate the real advantage and the difference is. I just think you're going to need a lot of money going forward. It's not going to be enough. And my concern is that you're lacking business acumen. So, sadly, I can't be a part of this journey, but good luck. Thank I'm out. You. Thank I'm you. Out. Appreciate it. Concerned about mounting costs, Tej Lalvani passes on the pouches and he becomes the first dragon out. And it appears to Kasuliman is also unwilling to take out his checkbook. I'm going to tell you exactly where I stand. I think you are passionate about this brand, but sometimes you've got to stop and think. Right. I wish you all the best, and I really respect your passion, but I'm out. Pia, my biggest worry for you is that I'm not sure you're listening to the market and you have spent a small fortune. I'm afraid, as it stands, there's no signals given to me that this has got anything like a sizable market. So I'm sorry, I'm out. Pia, I will always give credit for somebody for having a go. But the hardest thing in the world is when you've had a go, is to recognise when something's not working and cut your losses. I recognise that there are challenges with this brand, but I still greatly believe in it. I do believe there's a market for it, 100%. Everyone I speak to has had an experience where they have a bottle that's gathering dust in a cupboard. Listen, everything you've told me today, and you've tried your best to put a positive spin on, but this is now going to stop. Sometimes we just got to cut our losses and learn from it and do something really successful next time. Fair enough. No, I appreciate it. I'm out. Three more dragons decide not to splash their cash on Piers' idea. Sarah Davies is the entrepreneur's only remaining hope for investment. Has she heard anything? to make her raise a glass to the alcoholic pouch proposition. Pia, I love cooking, I love eating. You've got a fantastic top chef to cook me a lovely miniature meal and it had alcohol in. <laughs> Honestly, I was right there. But what I did, and I know it's not drinking masala, right. but I did, I had a little drink and I thought, oh, that's not very strong. And I had a look on the back and saw that it was 12% volume. Now, what is regular masala? Uh, regular masala is usually around 17%. I just feel a bit let down. Do you? Mm. Yeah. This was another 
predicament for us because obviously I wanted the price point to be as low as possible for the consumer. Full strength, you might be paying five quid for this pouch as opposed to 2.99. But I don't mind paying for the bottle of masala, even if I don't use all of it, if it makes my food taste great. Right. Because it's the sort of food that I prepare when I've got people coming around. So you want it to be awesome. Absolutely. And that is my problem with it. I don't think my cooking would taste as awesome as what it would if I bought a proper bottle of masala. And for that reason, it tells me that the product is not right. And if the product is not right, I can't get behind it. Right. So I definitely won't be investing, and I'm out. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Good luck, Pia. Good luck, Pia. Oh, thank you. Sarah Davies declines a deal, meaning it's back to the drawing board for Pia's boozy business. She leaves the den empty-handed. Of course, I'm disappointed, but I'm going to take everything the dragons say on board because they're very successful business people and know a lot more than I do. She's going to need another half a million pounds to really get it somewhere. The product isn't right. I do believe there is a market for it, but today gave me a lot to think about how and if to move forward. <laughs>